Hey guys, it's me, Bittersteel here, back with another video for Hearts of Iron 4 Battle for the Bosporus. As you can see down here, I am on version 1.10.2, the beta patch. So things you see in this video may be subject to change or may just be completely bonkers. This is a beta after all. Today we'll be playing as the Kingdom of Greece, the last country that we haven't visited yet in the current DLC. And what will we be doing as Greece? Simple, we will be restoring Byzantium as you do and we'll be trying to get bad romance, which means we need to puppet Romania, the Soviet Union and Italy. Sounds like a plan. Let's go. But first, if you like these videos, leave a like and hit me up in the comments telling me what you want to see me try next. Maybe a cool challenge, maybe some achievements you're having trouble with. I'm always open to some more suggestions. Also consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload more content. Other than that, we have a very cool and active Discord community. I'll leave links to that down in the description below. And if you're one of those people who likes Twitter, I also have a Twitter. You can find the link for that in the description as well. But enough rambling, on to the video! So starting out as Greece, well, we have a few rather terrible national spirits. Pretty bad king, a bunch of debt, foreign monopolies, a Schachtplan, the only thing that's reasonably or even, well, mildly okay. Some political instability, of course, and an agrarian society. Don't worry, we'll work our way through this. Greece has the potential of becoming a powerhouse eventually. First order of business into our decisions. We will be placing the king under house arrest. Don't need him meddling. Next up, focuses. We'll start out by devaluating the drachma, who needs currency anyway. Now the military. It's not huge, but it's something we can work with. I'll just plop them down in Athens so they can exercise in peace. I could assign a general. These are not terrible, but we'll be getting much better generals along the way. So we'll hold out assigning a general. There won't be any fighting early on anyway, and everyone can be the standard template. The navy. Greece is a Mediterranean country and Mediterranean countries have navies. And we'll assign the navy to strike force. This is essentially force projection, as they won't really be doing anything, but they will still be giving you naval supremacy. This is handy in fending off, for instance, Turkey from landing on your shores without making a very large investment in fuel. Your ships won't use any fuel, but they'll still be enough to deter the enemy. I also like to make a few changes here. I tend to make my submarine fleets in groups of five, little wolf packs that I allow to reinforce from these um, reserve fleets. So that's something I like to do. I'll, as we get more boats, I'll assign them to additional strike forces. We will rule the Mediterranean. Construction. Since we have the Schacht plan, might as well build a single civi and we'll follow up with a bunch of military factories. And our production tab shows us why we need a bunch of military factories. Oh boy, we have two. Uh, let's plan for the future. We'll need some support equipment for our basic templates and I like to fill it out like this that should do once we get more factories don't worry we will get more factories this is just a rough start research is a fairly standard your basic engineering and construction or rather basic engineering and industry i will let you know when we switch over to something more interesting as for the dockyards we'll start out with a bunch of convoys let's see we have 90 no not 100 I'll build 20 or 30 more. That should be enough since we'll be taking a lot of convoys from our neighbors. After which we will be building more bathtubs. And to build better bathtubs, I'm just going to do some naval exercises until I have enough experience. Since I want to improve these submarines to include uh, rank 2 torpedoes and rank 2 engines. So we'll need uh, roughly 9 or 10 experience. And that's the basic setup for the Kingdom of Greece done. All that's left is to set the speed to the max and get cracking. A few moments later. Excellent! Because the king was not around to meddle in the elections, the Venezelists or Venezelists have won the election. Good, this is what we want. And this brings us to our first bit of RNG. This man will die. When? That's completely up to the random number generator. Ideally, you want him to last all the way down to the um, takeover by the gamers. Yes, I know it's silly but I can't say this word. If he doesn't last that long, that's okay, but we do need to keep him around or pray that he sticks around long enough. Worst case scenario, he dies halfway through this focus and well, 
that's pretty terrible. Ideally, you'd want to keep him around all the way up to this focus, preferably even longer. But if he dies sooner, I recommend just restarting. You haven't really lost anything up to this point except a little bit of time. So if he kicks the bucket before you finish remembering the Anatolian catastrophe, I suggest just restarting. Now, why would we do that? Well, if he kicks the bucket, he'll be replaced by the, with a leader who's not as good. As a result, this here will drop below 10%, forcing us to ease up on our conscription laws, which is going to waste another 150 PP later down the line, while we need a lot of PP to get to where we need to go. Additionally, our stability will be lower, and we need stability. And finally, it will also impact our PP gain, and like I said, we need a lot of PP. So, ideally, he sticks around all the way up to horror and fear. Worst case scenario, he dies here. So, this will be entirely up to chance. No way to influence it. We have devalued the drachma. We will now be rushing down to remembering the Anatolian catastrophe, after which we will put some more attention into our industry with utilize our strengths and open foreign subsidized factories. This one uh, requires a little bit of work, but don't worry, we'll get to that when it's relevant. Now, as for political power, a few good things to spend it on early would be to improve worker conditions. And I suggest following up with some anti-communist raids as well. We want to get our stability up as high as possible, as soon as possible, because we will be rushing into an early conflict with Turkey and having stability below 50%. Oof, that's a big gamble. You really don't want those strikes. Later on, we might also just crush the communists as well. But that will depend on our PP gain. As for the Navy, they can stop exercising and get back to playing strike force. And we will be updating our production now. We'll improve these bathtubs to have some better torpedoes and better engines. And once we're done with our convoys, we'll start producing them. Research-wise, we'll stick to electronic engineering and industry just a bit until we're caught up in tech. One thing I haven't mentioned yet, but there's this big page here, managing the debt to the IFC. Well, we are completely going to ignore that. Greece will not be paying its debt today, any day in this playthrough. Don't worry, we'll have a chance to get rid of the national spirit that causes this later on. It's just gonna cost us a lot of PP. Now that we finished that, uh, bring home the exiled Republicans focus, we have some better generals. I like this one, Theodoros Pangalos, as my infantry commander. And later on, we'll be promoting Nikolaos Plasistras, the one brilliant strategist we have, to our field marshal. But I want to hold on to my command power for as long as I can. I want to get this up to 50, so we can uh, send an attaché to Spain for a little bit of army XP. Now, for industry, I do prefer sticking with the dispersed branch here, simply because of the efficiency retention and efficiency base. Our economy is weak, and we need every edge we can get. Now, if you're playing the long game, concentrated might be better. Your choice, I prefer to stick with this burst for a country this week. And we've compromised with the monarchists. This is great, because now we can appoint Ioannis Metaxas as our first cabinet member. 10% PP gain and 5% factory output. That is great. And on to the Anatolian catastrophe. So far, so good. Venizelos is sticking around. Now, we're mostly caught up in the industry branch. We could get excavation, but it's not that important right now. We're gonna get uh, radios. Now, for the other slots, what I recommend you do, research-wise from now on, is keeping up to date in the basics of infantry equipment. Pick up maintenance companies. Maintenance companies are going to be great. And stay up to date with the artillery. Land doctrines, I recommend going into superior firepower, so switch out of grand battle plan when the situation allows. Ah, uh, this is unfortunate. He died fairly early on, I think halfway into the Anatolian catastrophe. Now we could restart, but I don't think we have to. We'll see what happens. Yes, as you can see here, we will need to ease up on conscription within 120 days if we cannot get our war support over 10%. That's gonna be a tall order. Fortunately, this one will bring us 5%, so we'll need to find a percent somewhere hopefully with a rise in world tension. Fortunately, we now have access to a professional crisis solver. Okay, and the nationalists have kicked things off, which means we need to befriend the Republicans so we can send our attaché over. And with the Anatolian catastrophe done, let's keep going. We could head down this branch, but we first need to pick up some goodies on the industry side of things. We'll be utilizing our strengths and following that up with opening some foreign subsidized factories. And we'll also send an attaché to Republican Spain 
just to get ourselves a little bit of extra army XP and stop our relations improvement. There we go. Now we'll wait for 150 PP so we can hire this sharp tongued lawyer. Now, if our previous leader had stuck around just a little bit more, this guy would have been considerably cheaper. Oh, well, this is also the point where the Anatolians start being uppity. If you're trying to reform the Byzantine Empire, you always want to side with them gamers rise up after all and you'll notice stability starts to plummet fortunately though we managed to pick up a nice amount of war support through our attache so we are no longer at risk of having to demobilize all right let's appoint our sharp-tongued lawyer now what we are going to do is as soon as we have 10 pp available we'll be sending them to improve relations with the germans the russians the french and the uk the goal is to have opinion of all four countries over 80. Now that way, when we finish open foreign subsidized factories, we will get four military factories, one for each of those countries that has an opinion greater than 80, plus for civilian factories as well. So that's well worth the effort. It's also why we hired this guy. He will make maintaining those higher relations cheaper, so it won't cost as much PP per day. I recommend starting with the countries that really don't like you, like the Russians. And with research all caught up, let's pivot and pick up superior firepower. And the industry finishes as well, and we'll pick up better guns. We want to give our troops every edge we can. Utilize our strengths is done. Time to open subsidized foreign factories and keep improving relations we have our radios let's keep things going either get support equipment or even better interwar artillery and because we have that sharp tongue lawyer we're able to maintain an improvement in relations with all four countries simultaneously while still having positive pp gain that guy's pretty great we should get there in time get all of them up to 80 now if possible and the previous leader survives just a little bit longer, I recommend starting those improvements a little earlier. But if you can't, no worries. Just make sure that you can start doing them at least at the same time as you start to focus. You will need some time and you might get a negative event here and there that could break off your progress. And just as I said it, the event has popped up. Ideally, you want to pick the top one, but this is going to cost us 50 PP, meaning we'll uh, start dropping off our improved relations with the other countries. Have a look. We're done with France. We should last long enough. UK needs a little bit of work. This is risky. We're also done with the USSR and we're done with Germany. I'm going to let the event take a little bit more just to give us a little bit of headroom. See how long the focus is. Oh yeah, it's fine. I'll just take it. You can see it cancelled those improvements. But we're good with the UK. This won't drop off quickly enough. And we're good with France as well. Same with the Germans and the Russians. And there we go. Let's check out our production. Four fresh factories. Excellent. And our construction as well. We now have additional factories. Too bad we're using so many on consumer goods. But never fear. We'll solve that eventually. And on our way to solving that... Let's restore our home and tell the Germans and Italians to get stuffed. We will now be hoarding political power until we're able to shift up to partial mobilization. Good time to get our new field marshal as well. We'll take Nicolaus Plastiras. Nicolaus Plastiras, the brilliant strategist, promote him. He can lead our armies. Speaking of the army, we'll park them on the border with Turkey near Edirne. Better guns researched. Let's get support weapons and start producing those better weapons. We'll also start churning out some better bathtubs now. Like I said, the age of the grand battleship is over. Now is the time of the underwater tube. And interwar artillery is done. We'll pick up support companies, the maintenance company now. We will be using them to acquire some foreign equipment later on. We also have 10 army experience. Time for a little bit of a change. Let's edit our basic infantry template. This is good for a future defensive template. So I'll be duplicating this and turning this into the future. Yes, the hoplites. And the basic infantry template will now be edited. We'll add in some artillery in exchange for infantry. That will give us 20 combat with a basic 7-2. Again, this is by no means perfect. Ideally, I want to double this up to a 14-4 once we have the industry and manpower. But for now, versus the AI, it'll do. This does mean we need a lot of artillery though. Restoring our home is done. We will now keep heading down the center of this branch all the way up to resurrecting the Megali idea. And going up to partial mobilization has just become a lot cheaper. When assigning traits to your general and field marshal, 
I recommend starting with the Field Marshal. You'll need some command power though, we are currently lacking. I recommend picking up Organization first for the Reinforcer Rate and Aggressive Assaulter and Offensive Doctrine. These three will make your army an offensive beast. I'm also going to start training some units. Yes, I know we're short on equipment, but eh, might as well start. That way uh, we have a bit of head start once equipment starts pouring in, in case we forget later. And the Nationalists want our Attaché gone. Well, we could just uh, grant them the request. We'll be getting our own batches of army XP soon enough. Or we could say no. It's only 25 PP. I'll say no. And do note, if you're uh, struggling for PP, you kind of want to rush parcel mobilization. So if you're not too far off, it's my, it, it might actually be worth it to just withdraw the attaché. You have the first rank of superior firepower, artillery is ahead of time, infantry equipment as well. Time for some more industry. Eventually. And we have venerated the ancient Helens. Got a good chunk of PP from that. Let's ramp things up. Ooh, we can't get partial mob yet, so we'll hold on to that PP just a little bit. We're a little short on the war support. Could get a good political advisor though. The industrialist here will help us build more mills. Alternatively, we can crush the commies. This will uh, sure help with stability later on. Now, the choice here is yours. Either you pick the industrialists and uh, risk taking those strikes once the conflict with Turkey begins, or you solve the problem with the communists now and get the industrialist later. That way, chances are you won't ever be at risk of those strikes. Me, I'm feeling a little bit frisky, so I'll take the chances and go for the industrialist first. We do need a lot of stuff, and construction is a bit on the slow side. And with infantry weapons done, again, this is still ahead of time, so I suggest switching back into the industry. Now, from this point on, research is fairly straightforward. To keep up to date with research and industry, infantry tech, artillery tech, and doctrines. Anything else you might want to pick up should be easy since Greece has access to five research slots. So you can go for airplanes, you can go for tanks, and you can go for naval stuff. But that will have to wait until you get a few more slots. Early game, I recommend focusing on the infantry and the artillery if you want to do some combat. And one more lifesaver you might want to pick up will be the MPs. We will be occupying some land. And this should get us there all the way. Negotiations with the EEE. You want to pick the top options. This will lead down to Path to Glory later. Plus, first things first, partial mobilization. Get that economy going. Next up, we will be crushing the communists. That will get them out of our hair in the future. Now we will be resurrecting the Magali idea. Don't worry, this won't take 140 days. I've never seen this succeed and we don't want it to either. There we go, the Heracleon Convention. When this pops up, this is where we decide who we invite to the table to carve up Turkey. And we'll invite all the original signatories. So the UK, France and Italy. Don't worry, they won't show up. Of course, only the country that hates us has showed up. So the entire convention is cancelled. Excellent. And the focus is bypassed. And we move on to horror and fear. This is where we pick a fight with Turkey. Once the focus finishes, we will declare on Turkey. Turkey is guaranteed by Romania. So we'll pull in Romania without getting the French or Czechs involved. Now from that point onward, things might get a little weird. I've seen Romania do a bunch of things before, so I cannot guarantee what the outcome of that conflict is going to be. I've seen a few different options. I've seen Romania peace out with a white piece after Turkey falls. That was strange. I've seen Romania go with Balkan Entente and pull in Yugoslavia and Hungary. That was even weirder. Or I've seen Romania stay in the fight after Turkey falls, after which I was able to easily conquer them as well. So it's a bit of a toss up. I think it's beta issues in the current patch, but we'll see what happens. Now for PP, we'll be saving as much PP as we can. By the time the conflict ticks in, we need to get this war support up. And we want to hire a bit of a military high command, like the infantry expert and the artillery expert. And roughly halfway through horror and fear, the repercussions of dealing with the EEE have popped up. We now have the option of, well, having a bit of a struggle with them, not what we want, or we can simply have them take over. That's exactly what we want. Click that. Now you'll notice, stability-wise, suddenly doing quite terribly. We'll need to solve that as soon as possible. Fortunately, war support is pretty decent. Like I said, we'll need a lot of PP to take some decisions as soon as we can. And we now have a cartoon villain running the country. Is it just me or does anyone else see the villain of wacky races in that guy? Now, an easy way to start working on that stability is 
anti-democratic raids. It actually works doubly well, both because it reduces democracy support, giving us more uh, gamers in the country, and it just straight up boosts stability. Now we will be flirting with that 50% uh, when the conflict happens, so we could get strikes and we could potentially even get desertions. No guarantees here, but we'll try to minimize the risks as much as we can. Well, there we go, it's kicked off. Horror and fear. We have declared on Turkey, Romania has been pulled in. Fortunately, our army is fairly well equipped behind the river and in a single tile. So we'll sit here and let the Turks expend their strength against us. And then we'll make our move once we're ready. Now for focuses, we'll be going back onto the industry path. Start out with connecting our prefectures, mostly because it gives us 10% stability. That's an easy way to get that stability back up. And then we'll follow through with rushing down luxury commodities, tobacco industry, and mobilize the economy. The last one here gives us a free war economy. That's pretty great. While we're here, might as well make some changes to the templates. Let's add on some maintenance companies. These will allow us to repurpose some Turkish equipment. Unfortunately, our supplies are rather low of all things. Maybe we can uh, take some donations from the Turks. Now for the next couple of months, we'll be sitting here defending anyway. The fleet has control of the seas, so don't worry about naval invasions. Just look at them bashing their heads against our defenses. Spend some more PP. Could get an infantry expert. Let's have a quick check here. Nothing good here. Maybe get some uh, more propaganda first, after which we'll switch over and get ourselves an infantry expert. We do need to get this up to at least 50, I believe. I wouldn't want to get desertions. And since we've also crushed the communists, we are now well above that 50% threshold for stability. So no strikes to worry about. That's pretty great. Seems like the Turkish offensive has petered out. Let's see if we can't do anything here. Now, this will be a bit of a cheesy way of defeating the Turkish army, I realize. However, we only have 13 divisions against the, well, several more that they have. We need every little edge we can get. This is my way of closing this pocket every time. Take six divisions, cut them in half, move to the next tile. So three move here, three move here, leaving you with uh, roughly three in the defensive tile. Cut those in half as well. And another three straight for Istanbul. And three will remain to defend Alexandropolis, and they can support attack this tile. The first offensive is the hardest. After the first pocket closes, you'll have a much easier time. This may not work straight away. If not, well, just wear them down a little bit more and then do it again. Which reminds me, let's get the Air Force in on this as well. Just get these tactical bombers to do close air support and your fighters to, well, fight for air superiority. This should help right now. We don't want them to reinforce that. So let's look for those units that are defending. Take one of them out and pin in Adir. Keep them there. He doesn't have to win. He just needs to delay them long enough. Excellent. And now we can expand. And we've trapped the Turkish army. Now what we will be doing is closing these two pockets and then pulling everyone back to Alexandropolis, letting the Turks flood in again. Yes, I know it's a well-known strategy and I know it's a bit cheesy or rather very cheesy, but we have to take every edge we can get. And we pull the army back to Alexandropolis and repeat until the Turkish army is gone and we can take Turkey. Now we do have a nice supply of political power. We could ramp up to extensive conscription. As you can see, manpower is a little on the low side. However, once we get our hands on Turkey, we will suddenly find ourselves overflowing with manpower. Alternatively, we can pick up an infantry expert and improve the divisions we already have. I suggest taking this one first. Once Turkey falls and we proceed down the left-hand path to reviving the double-headed eagle, we'll be able to uh, core all this land instantly anyway. Now the Turks are gonna walk right back in and we'll make more encirclements. It's great. Time to mobilize the economy and we'll get a free war economy. Not bad. Still a shortage of equipment, but we're improving with every pocket we close. All right, so far, 5,000 Greek losses and 235,000 Turkish men dead on the fields of Adern. They're down to, at most, 22 divisions. I'd say we're leveling the playing field. Maybe one or two more of these encirclements and we'll push and conquer the rest of Turkey. All right, we have mobilized the economy. 
Clearing the slums isn't a great idea. Building slots and 66k manpower isn't that fantastic. Make use of our islands could be good, but the optimum outcome requires owning Cyprus and the Dodecanese as well, and that will have to wait. Or we could rejuvenate Athens for four building slots and two civilians and a military factory. We're going to wait a little bit and instead hop over here and revive the double-headed eagle. I will also give us the opportunity to restore Byzantium once Turkey falls. Let's have a look at Romania. So far so good. They haven't formed the Balkan Entente yet, but they still might. If that happens, well, I, I would terminate that run. You're gonna be fighting Yugoslavia as well, and Greece is not that strong yet. But so far so good. Yeah, Turkey's down to at most 19 divisions. I'm gonna do one more pocket if they'll uh, fall for it again, and then we'll finish the fight. Hey, we have revived the double-headed eagle. Let's see here. And as such, we can restore Byzantium once we control all of Turkey. Should be smooth sailing. And we could work through the rest of this tree, but let's focus on the industry first. And get sophistry and science. More research speed and political power gain. Pretty great. Meanwhile, Picking up the Army Offense Specialist. It's time to put the final nail in Turkey's coffin. They shouldn't have the troops left to really oppose us, so this is just drawing a line and ending it. Also, now that we control the strait, let's add the Black Sea to our area where the strike force operates, or rather, looks at menacingly. That way the Romanians don't, uh, don't just do a cheeky naval landing in our rear. Seems like support equipment is usually the biggest problem. Yeah, the Turks really can't put up much of a fight anymore. Let's read a bit of fuel with our good friends, the United States of America. And we'll keep going in the industry branch and rejuvenate Athens. Now this is super interesting, but we don't control Cyprus or the Dodecanese, so we'll never be able to make full use of it. I'll have to settle for Athens. Total Turkish collapse. There we go, Turkey has completely collapsed. That's it. Pass a few times and take all their stuff. All states done. Excellent. And Romania decided to remain in the fight and they've not formed their faction yet. That's great. First off, let's click this button. Where is it? Revive Byzantium. Oh yeah, just look at that glorious color. That is the royal purple, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> One thing to note though, they still haven't given Hatay a core. So this is an occupied state. Uh, just, just keep that in mind when taking resistance into account. Turkey still is being a bit annoying here. Now for the Romanians, we'll start planning some naval landings along the Black Sea coast. What we're going to do is land along this, uh, this side of the Danube. I believe this is the Danube? Yeah, it's the Danube. We will hit Dobrish, Constantia and the other port to the north and then quickly push to the river and dig in. We'll ferry the rest of our army across and just wait for the Romanians to stall as they try desperately to push us back into the sea. The major river crossing should give us the edge we need along with the occasional use of last stand. Meanwhile, we're still recruiting more troops to ferry across as well. And we'll also focus the entire navy on the Black Sea. There's no point to messing around in the Mediterranean. Might even use the capital ship as a naval invasion support guy. And we'll use our newly discovered wealth of factories to bolster our ranks. We've just gone from being the weakest guy on the block to being an absolute unit. I'm getting some divisions ready as well. They'll be shipped across with the rest of the army. I've also added a new template here, our Spartans. These are just a basic 14 force, 14 infantry battalions and four artillery battalions. We currently lack the heavy industry required to really commit to a tank core. But we'll get to that as we expand and build up some more. These will do nicely versus the AI. Very good shock troops, 40 combat with, with a good amount of soft attack. And as soon as our stockpiles allow, we'll start training a few of these. With Athens rejuvenated onto the foreign monopolies, we will cooperate with the foreign monopolies and finally get rid of that 
terrible, terrible national spirit and improve it somewhat. Meanwhile, I have been exercising these guys. I don't know why. It's probably a bad idea. We'll launch our naval invasion of Romania and get ready to knock them out as well. We still haven't formed their faction, so there's still no risk of Yugoslavia being drawn in. But I will lower the speed for this a little. This will require some more micro. So going to commit the air force to the Eastern Balkans as well. Every little edge helps. Excellent, we're already pushing ashore. Usually the Romanians don't garrison this stretch of the coast, but they always have something in Dobrich. Uh, troops have made landfall. Immediately assist with the assault on Dobrich and try and push across as well. So we can uh, cut off this division and push to the river. Same here, leave a unit behind, other unit pushes to the river. I'm gonna get rid of the battle lines. I'm gonna do this manually until we're well positioned. The rest of the army can help across the Constanta as well. These units will simply dig in. The Romanian army is quite large and I want them to expend as much of their strength as possible before we make our move. All right, we should be able to push to the river now. Come on, to the river, boys. Excellent, we've pushed the entire army me to the river let's get rid of all these lines and just set a frontline order here with an attack order so I can start building planning now the Romanian army will keep bashing their heads against this fortunately our troops are high quality we're relatively well supplied and we control the seas here despite all these uh, Romanian mines having been laid your troops will run the risk of being overwhelmed by the constant assaults think uh, Soviet Union constantly bashing their heads against your lines that's what you're going to see if that happens and you run the risk of being overrun just hit that last step and order and try and shuffle some troops around to reinforce the weakest points and the weakest points is this province here the top corner because it can be attacked from one two three four five five different positions i will simply wait for our troops to redeploy and uh well let the romanians come we'll get them meanwhile training our 14 force once these are deployed we'll ferry them across and we'll start taking the romanian army apart bit by bit more political power by this point this guy's pretty decent entrenchment speed and maximum entrenchment plus land doctrine research not bad you get a five percent penalty to mobilization speed but that's just the rate at which additional manpower comes in shouldn't really be that much of a problem and the extra entrenchment is going to help these units tremendously and there we go the romanians have started throwing themselves at our units as you can see this province is the worst off you could just ferry additional troops in there to relieve the weaker ones we'll have to keep this up for a little bit you'll notice when these yellow bars under the romanian units starts dipping that's the time we'll make our move until then, we can wait a little bit. I'm also going to pick up an espionage agency now. I'm not going to go heavily into the spies, but it's nice to have them in case you need a, a quick non-aggression pack later on. Looking at you, Italy. Looking at you. This looks like a nice opportunity for a counterattack. They're all low orc from attacking us. I'm going to try and push across to this tile. Usually, this is the linchpin. Once this falls, that provides an excellent opportunity to keep pushing. And I've noticed the Romanian army crumbles now getting across might be difficult but if it doesn't work the first time just sit back relax and let the romanians hurt themselves on your lines a little bit longer we have time still time for the academy of athens now another research slot very nice as far as political power is concerned we have the most important ones we don't need to ramp up conscription just yet we could do later on we could replace our sharp-tongued lawyer here with a mm, paramilitarist here Xenophon, not bad, training time. And that uh, support for gamers is nice since it's, it's rather low. Or, what I like to do, save up a little so we can illegally default on our debt. We're just gonna pull the grease here and gonna wait until we can default on our debt. Ugh, Romanians keep shuffling troops in here, so we might need to weaken them a little more before we can actually push across this river. Seeing as that same river crossing penalty that's keeping our army alive is also preventing us from really pushing them. Uh, it's not working. We'll need to weaken the Romanians a little more first. But you can tell in some places those yellow bars are dipping, so they're hurting already. Probably either manpower or equipment they're lacking. It doesn't matter which, we'll exploit that soon enough. So what's it been? A month now? And we've lost almost 10,000 units just digging in behind that river. Meanwhile, the Romanians are up to uh, 127,000 losses. Let's keep this going a little longer and they should fold no problem. I'm going to speed things up a bit until we are ready to push though. And the Academy of Athens is done. Eh, could pick up more of these. More recruitable pop, stability, etc. They're all nice. Work our way down all the way to Byzantine Themata. And our 14 fours are finished. We'll ship them across and they should be enough to break this tile and watch the entire Romanian army crumble. I think our time's up. It's April 3rd. 
39. It's time to finish this. Fortunately, Romania still not in a faction, so so far it's going well. Looks like Bulgaria's in the Axis. Okay, would have been nice if we could snag them up. Unfortunately, we can't. Yeah, Romanian losses are so high: 273,000 versus 18k. Uh, they can't reinforce their divisions anymore. Every bit of damage we do is pretty much permanent from now on. So once we break this tile, that's it. That's going to be our way across the river. And we've made it across the river. We just need to survive their counterattack and we'll be golden. Oh, we've also got a bunch of political power, which means it's time to illegally default on our debt. Bye. Oh, look at it. We suddenly have factories again. Time to use them. Darn, they managed to push us across. It's fine. Just come back. I should have used the last stand order there. I uh, got distracted. Oh, that river penalty. That's the only thing holding us back, really. It's the only thing keeping the Romanians alive at this point. But they'll break. They'll break eventually. They can't keep this up. Just look at those yellow bars. They're exhausted. They're out of equipment and they're out of organization. Well, that illustrates the importance of paying attention. That set us back about a month or less. I hit a quick last stand order so everyone can recover. Now for focuses, I recommend you finish up the Themata here. Pick up oil liquefaction and the rest of this tree. You'll probably need to go with British docking rights or renegotiate with France, since this is locked out. Appeal to the Soviet Union is going to be pretty much useless. They will come for your blood. Soviet Union seems hard-coded to manually justify on Greece. So. Not much there. And finally, the Hellenic Armed Forces. This one will bolster your army. A lot of good stuff there. I'll leave those choices up to you. From this point onward, the campaign is fairly straightforward. We'll take Romania, we will take Russia, and then Italy, depending on how the world changes. But first, let's finish Romania. No, oh, it's August 39, which does mean, yes, Hungary has flipped. They're all gamers now. So if we just justify on them, that will take 80 days. By that time, the Romanians should have folded and will be able to take Hungary as well. That will significantly weaken the axis in this game. Yeah, Transylvania, not a great area to fight in, but it's where the last victory points are. Just snatch these up and there we go. The Romanians are done for. I'll just take all these states and line our boys up with Hungary. Hungary's next. We're a bit lucky though. Usually, Soviet Union starts justifying on Greece or Byzantium the moment you've uh, taken these border provinces from Romania. But they'll come eventually. They want Bessarabia. And just as I said it, yep, they're justifying on us. Let's see what they want. They are going to try and take Bessarabia from us in 150 days, which means in about 140 days, I'm going to release Romania, completely invalidating that justification, making them start all over. It's fine. Sometimes they justify for one of your Greek territories or Thrace or Constantinople. And in that case, I recommend you release Romania as a puppet and dig in in the Caucasus. But we do have time, so I am going to snatch up Hungary. Also going to start work on some toad anti-air. Not necessarily to shoot down airplanes, but versus the AI, this is really all the armor piercing you need to defeat their early tanks. And later with infantry improvements, your divisions should be able to stand up to any tank division. And we're back. Unfortunately, some footage was lost. OBS is playing some tricks with me, but never fear. 
Here's a quick recap. So we obviously conquered Turkey, formed the Byzantine Empire. Then we went on to defeat Romania with a little naval landing and conquered their territory as well before pushing into Hungary and turning them into our puppets. During that time, the Soviet Union was justifying on Bessarabia, which we still held. But about 10 days before they finished their justification, we released Romania. That completely invalidated their justification. Unfortunately, though, Romania then went ahead and gave Bessarabia away. But that's fine, we don't need it for the achievement. Where do we go from here? We have one of the three countries puppeted. We still need the Soviet Union and Italy. There are three possible paths and the most optimal one seems to be unavailable to us. The more optimum route relies on Spain. If Spain by this time has flipped to the gamer ideology, they are free real estate. You make your justification, you conquer Spain, turn them into a puppet, much easier, and then use the port of La Coruña up here as a jumping off point. It goes through these two tiles, the Bay of Biscay and the Western Approaches, completely avoiding the channel, allowing you to land in Cardiff and Bristol and the area around it. And once your troops land, it's just a matter of quickly pushing out and capping the United Kingdom, closing WW2 before the USA gets involved. And without further allied interference, you're free to play as you want in Europe, either taking on the Axis or taking on the Soviets. Choice is yours, really. However, it's already July of 1940 and Franco is still non-aligned. So that path is not available to us. Which brings us to the remaining two options. One, we could join the Axis and help Germany take on the Soviet Union. Then in the ensuing peace deal, we take whatever we can while at the same time not getting involved against the Allies. You really don't want to get involved against the Allies. There's hardly any point to it. One risk you run, especially in the current patch where it's not working entirely as intended, is that Bulgaria might take some of your territory. As you can see here, there's a pre-arranged Bulgarian territorial expansion, which means if we are in a faction with Germany and Bulgaria, Germany will give these territories to Bulgaria. It's not supposed to work if the player or the controlling country has a core on it, but that's still somewhat buggy. It works if you're Greece, it doesn't work if you're the Byzantine Empire. Oh well, I suppose they'll fix that eventually. Now that strategy does come with a few risks, namely, the Axis are fairly weak in this patch, meaning they will eventually cave to allied naval landings. And since we won't be there to really help them out, that's going to be the end of them. And the Allies will have a whole lot of participation, allowing them to possibly puppet Italy before you have a chance to. Which brings us to the third and our preferred method for now, since we can't go through Spain. We turn on the Axis first. As you can see, the Italians are justifying against us. They are using their focus. You can't see it yet, but I do know by the timing that this is their go against Greece focus. We still have a non-aggression pact that we can cancel in, I believe, February of 41. Yes, February of 41. So by the time they finish this focus and we cancel that non-aggression pact, they will immediately declare on us, pushing us into a defensive battle against the Axis. That's perfectly fine. We will then dig in in the Balkans and prepare naval landings on Italy. And from there, we work on destroying the Axis alongside the USSR and the Allies. One thing I've noticed in my playthrough right now is that we can create a faction with Yugoslavia. That would be pretty good since we already control Hungary and Romania. That will completely lock Bulgaria out of any support from its allies. And it gives us a much shorter front line to defend since once we take uh, Zara here and Albania here, it's, it's just up north here that we need to defend. And this is pretty defensible terrain. Now in your game, this this may not be possible, but since it is for us, I'm going to do it. What we want to do is get more troops, continuously recruit units. You want to get as many of these 14 fours out as you can. These are going to be the bread and butter. Our stockpiles are looking good. We can support this. Our industry has vastly improved and will continue to do so. And as you can see, I've started to put a little bit of effort into the air with close air support and fighters. So like I said, we will now be focusing on Italy and the rest of the Axis. 
one thing that could be helpful to ensure that you have full control of at least by the time they decide to fall over is play with collaboration governments. So to that end, I will be improving our espionage agency. And to ensure we actually get across fairly well, we will be improving our landing craft as well. And since we've also been researching submarine threes, now's a good time to start making them. The AI has no way of dealing with these. I'm also going to start making some toad anti-air. These are going to be great for piercing those relatively weak AI tanks. And since we probably won't be establishing air dominance anyway, three days later, whoops, almost missed the mark there. We're well into February 1941, which means we can cancel this non-aggression pact. And uh, as soon as I unpause, Italy should be quite gung-ho for us. So. Just cancelled the non-aggression pact. Let's see what happens. And obviously the Axis have decided to get themselves involved. I'm going to justify on Bulgaria. It's only taking 10 days and 2 PP. Just in case they realize their precarious situation and decide not to get involved. Now let's quickly push the Axis out of Albania. And that will secure our shores for now. After which we will rush all the way up to Yugoslavia. And set up a defensive perimeter there. And get them involved as well. Oh yeah, the Italians are no match for us. Now now this is going to be a pretty long and drawn out conflict. I will not be showing all of it in a time lapse. I will be cutting a lot of footage, but I'll leave the best bits in. I'm gonna start preparations for a naval landing of Italy as well. It's going to be important that we control the territory if we are to stand any chance in the eventual peace deal. And Italy is fairly weak when it comes to resisting naval landings. Now I have noticed the eye has improved a little, but this shouldn't be able to put up too much of a fight. And with a quick blow, we now control Bulgaria. That's the Balkans pretty much locked down. Now to set up a defensive perimeter to the north, there is going to be quite some fierce fighting up there though. We will need to rely on some Yugoslav help for it. Fortunately, our puppets here are drawing a lot of Axis attention away without them being involved. They shouldn't be declared on either, so do not involve them in this. It's going to keep your front line nice and narrow. Seeing as manpower is a bit of an issue for us, it might not be a bad time to ramp up the service by requirement. I don't like doing it this early, but we just don't have that much manpower to work with. Okay, everyone's in position in Yugoslavia. Let's get them involved as well. They will push hard to the north, so make sure these troops are well dug in and they have their entrenchment bonus. Oh yeah, they're coming at us hard and fast. See if I can get my boys in the air. Alright, with the Axis pushing hard to northern Yugoslavia, let's see if we cannot quickly hop across the Adriatic here. We have our naval evasion in place, it's all prepared. There shouldn't be any ships here, since our ships are in port, but they're not actively doing anything. We've not challenged the Italian Navy, so they're probably busy contending with the British in, in the areas around here. Probably, yeah. So we do have our ships in position, now to quickly set them to naval invasion support. And our submarines, they can, well... Convoy raid. Let's slow the game down. Yes, and our naval invasions are underway. We are struggling to the north here, though. Whew, that's a lot of Axis troops. I think we can hold. We are going to need more troops, though. And we're landing in Italy already. Great, great, great. We want to quickly spread out as much as we can. Pick as much of the country as possible and try and cut them in half. Then quickly mop up. Once Italy's out, that's going to be great for us. Yeah, AI is probably panicking right now. Trying to rush as many troops back home as it can. We're doing major damage to Italy. Once we clear up this Roman pocket, it's just a matter of digging into the north and cleaning up south. All right, that country is thoroughly cut in half. Now to push south and clean up, push down into Sicily before they can reinforce it. And the rest of our army will dig into the north, maybe try and push towards that river. Problem here isn't so much that there's Italians here, but there will be some reinforcing Germans as well. And the Yugoslav front is holding very nicely. Germans are bleeding. And if we're looking at participation, we're already doing quite nicely. Though, I don't think... No, there haven't been any big allied D-Day landings yet. But still... Oh! Six hours later. Alright, since I don't really feel like pushing through these mountain territories here, or pushing from Yugoslavia, which is going to give them the occupation that we want, I'm going to get the Vichy involved by launching a massive naval invasion of the south of France. See if we can not get the access to break when we do that. Oh, it looks like the Germans have organized quite the defense here. Uh, this may end up getting bogged down, but that's fine. We have uh, 
effectively extended the line significantly. Well, it uh, <laughs> would appear the UK has allowed Ireland to be capitulated. I don't know how the Germans managed to sneak an invasion force past the Royal Navy, but they managed. You know, when you rely on the AI to be competent, that's when you'll be disappointed. Uh, look at all these delicious pockets being closed. Uh, German losses must be staggering by now. And since we're not in the Allies, we're actually occupying all this territory. That's great for occupation, great for participation. Let's have a look here. Yeah, we're up to 51%. Yes, this peace deal is going to be great for us. Looks like the US managed to liberate a slice of Belgium. That does mess with our lines a little. In case you're wondering why some areas are flipping to the UK, or in this case the US, and others are not, it's because we have military access with the UK and with the US. That means if they walk into an allied tile, it will revert back to their faction control. Well, if we do it, it's fine. That's also why this entire area is not French, but Byzantine is because we do not have military access with the French. I specifically decided not to. And we were the first ones to get here. So it's our occupation. Seems we've run into the Maginot. There's no point in pushing past this. And in preparation of our conflict with the USSR, I'm also going to heavily invest in Romania, get their autonomy down and integrate them. This will make a much better front line to push from than the Caucasus. The Caucasus are terrible terrain for offensive operations. As you can see, Germany is completely out of steam. They cannot muster any semblance of a defense anymore. It would be nice if I could just push across this Maginot line, but even their weak units can easily hold my 14 fours here. So it's not worth it. The north will fall and that's gonna be it. Three weeks later. And that's it. We have finished the Axis and we get to go first at this peace deal. And, oh boy, we have a lot of participation. We can do a lot here. Let's uh, start with the important bit. Puppets, Italy. We, we need Italy. And that is a very, very successful peace deal for us. We have puppeted Italy and they are quite powerful. We managed to restore most of their territory to them. And we've done the same with the German Reich. They have only lost Poland, I believe. And we still control most of France since, well, it's ours now. Not gonna give it up. Don't even have the option of returning it to you, so I'm not gonna bother. Our focus now will be on taking on the USSR and we'll start justifying on them soon, but it would be nice if we can integrate these Romanians first. How much do we have left for that? Yeah, we need to send them a bunch of stuff before we can integrate them. It's really not a good idea to push out from the Caucasus, I'll tell you that much. So I'll be building up a little bit more until we are ready to completely integrate legionary Romania. And welcome back. We have uh, sent the Romanians all of our convoys and now we're ready to integrate them. And suddenly that's a lot more purple on the map. Started justifying on the Soviet Union as well. Won't take too long. The USSR is now doing its southern thrust. So it's already taken out Afghanistan and it's fighting Iraq and Iran now. Iran's doing spectacularly. So we might be able to draw those two countries into a faction with us. Might be nice. Uh, or we just leave them to die. It doesn't really matter. And with that, our justification on the Soviet Union is complete. We tackle the final boss in this playthrough now. Once the Soviets capitulate, that's it. We will be able to take them as a puppet and end this achievement run. Let's get going. One. We're not going to be calling any of our allies and we can do this on our own. Should that change? Well, we can always ask later.
So breakout is going well. I will be cutting a lot of this footage since it's going to be a bit of a slog. But overall, we shouldn't have too many issues with it, especially with the Soviet Union bogged down against Iran, of all people. Closed up a lot of pockets in the Caucasus already. Iran should be stable now. Iraq is safe. And we are just going to start pushing and pushing hard. Meanwhile, keep recruiting. We'll need a lot of troops. 20 minutes later. You know, the Russians can't do anything against us. These are just 14 fours. It's not like I'm using any high-tech armor. It's... Uh, it's not even fair at this point. <sighs> Russians falling by the millions. Jesus Christ. 5.2 million dead Russians. And, well, we're just pushing, 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 boys. One eternity later. Yep, that was it. The collaboration government finished and the Soviet Union capitulated. Oh, hey, great news. Uh, let's just turn him into a puppet and get it over with. And with that, the Russian Empire rises again. We've taken them as a puppet as well. Now, all that's left to do for our achievement is free Romania as our puppet. We'll release them as a puppet. Et voila. We now have Italy, Russia and Romania as our puppets. That is bad romance finished. 1944 so it's not too bad and overall didn't really take that much effort i think the axis put up most of the fight and the first conflict with turkey and romania could be difficult but after that it's clear sailing i mean the byzantine empire is really powerful plus just look at this giant faction we've just created now that is a chunky faction now i hope you've enjoyed this video i've had a lot of fun making it uh battle for the bosporus has been a little bit touch and go but i think they're on the right track with the beta patch 1.10.2 if you want to see more videos like this one leave a like consider subscribing and hit me up in the comments telling me what you want to see next some ideas for challenges or other achievements if you didn't like it that's fine just hit that dislike button and tell me what i did wrong i'm always looking to learn looking to improve this has been me bitter steel have a good one goodbye